Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Joyce. We're in my little shop here. I got the noisy little creek running in the backyard and it's fun because if, you, if you've watched these videos for a while, you'll see that I've been slowly taking some tree limbs out of here and cutting some grass back there. Um, eventually you'll see it go up the other side and we'll kind of work on that as well. Anyway, so it's just a neat little time snap capsule. I'll watch this video 10 years from now. I'm like, I remember when that was like that. So but anyway, so yeah, we bought some property. We've been full-timing for 15 years and we just bought some property maybe a year or two ago and um, it came with this little lean-to, so I made it my little studio. Enough on that. Let's talk about this furnace. So the other day, uh, Trisha was scheduling my day and we stuck another customer in in the middle of uh, four busy customers. So we tried to stick another customer in to get five customers that day. And their issue was their furnace would, the fan would start, but it wasn't producing heat. And so I swung by there real quick thinking, oh yeah, uh, I can get that fixed in record time. But it turns out that I, I couldn't and we were up against a, a window where we had to get to our next customer. So I just told this customer like, hey, let me take your furnace with me. I have a feeling it may be something involving a gas valve or something, which I don't have those parts, but let me just go ahead and take it with me and I'll get it fixed when I have a little bit of time and I'll get it back to you. They said, okay. I wasn't able to do it there on the site. So what we have here is a Suburban Furnace SF42FQ. Okay, um, so what that tells us, SF is Suburban Furnace, 42 is a 40,000 BTU, and the F and the Q tell us something about the door or no door, or access panel. And this one does not have an access panel, therefore I had to pull the whole stupid furnace out to work on it. And while the furnace was out, um, that's when I said, look, why put it back in to take it back out later? So let's just leave it out, I'll take it with me, I'll get it figured out, and um, we'll get it back to you. So um, let me, enough on that, let's get busy, okay? So um, I wanna bring you guys closer and show you some things. Um, let's do that right now. I'm gonna bring you right over here. So here we go for a ride. Okay, so whether you are a suburban furnace, an Atwood furnace, or a Dometic furnace, you've heard me say that these things are like sitting on an island somewhere and there's four wires that feed them. And so I put it on the bench, I pull my wires out, and so here we have the four wires. So it doesn't matter who the manufacturer is, they're pretty much all gonna have these wires. The colors may change. In this one, red is plus, yellow is minus 12 volts. Some of you might have a, a black for 12 volt minus. Overwhelmingly, they're gonna use red for plus, but don't assume. And here we have a yellow for minus. This is their 12 volts. And then you hear me talk about the blue circuit. Well, here these are two blue wires. Now this one is a solid blue and a blue with white stripe. Typically the ones with the stripe are gonna be the 12 volts plus, but never assume, okay? Um, and here we have our four wires, one, two, three, four. These are the ones I'm gonna get 12 volts. You've seen me in my videos, I talk about the furnace being on an island and it gets four wires and I've talked about the four wires. And so before we jump into this thing, I just wanted to show you, these are the blue wires. And the blue circuit, that's this one right here. Why does Darren call this a blue circuit? Because they always leave the furnace on blue wires. It could be two blues, it could be uh, a light blue and a dark blue. In this instance, we have blue and blue with the white stripe, but they're blue. Now, where the manufacturer is gonna tie in do not assume for one iota that they're gonna keep these color codes. Uh, they normally will not. I don't know that I've ever come across uh, a manufactured wiring job where they keep these colors. A lot of, now these wires here, the blue circuit, that could be just a simple thermostat wire, like the solid core, what is that, 20 gauge or something. Typically these, this circuit here, the blue circuit that I'm talking about, it's the one that's gonna go up into the RV if you have an air conditioner and your thermostat has furnace mode on your thermostat. Then these two blue wires, if it's the Dometic type, it's gonna go up to the ceiling plenum and that's where that, the, the brain and the ceiling plenum is gonna make contact of these two blue wires. If you have a Coleman air cell, then the connection of these two blue wires will be uh, done inside the thermostat. Let me add one more thing to the Coleman's. If you have a Coleman thermostat, then you're probably only gonna have one wire leaving. And actually it's technically it's coming back because the 12 volts is gonna be fed at the Coleman thermostat. And all they're gonna do is touch the, the, the 12 volts plus to the white wire on the thermostat. And that's gonna come back on this blue wire. And that's the call for heat signal. So if you have a Coleman, don't be surprised if one of these wires is capped off, okay? and only has one wire coming back. That's because the thermostat is where the 12 volts is getting picked up and it's feeding it down this wire. Dometics and some of these others, if you don't have a thermostat that has air conditioner mode on it and you just have one sitting on a wall, then you're gonna have both of these go up 
into the Dometic. The Dometic is just going to touch them together in the dry contact closure. If you have um, a, a, just a furnace thermostat, then you're going to touch them in that thermostat. In that instance, one of these will be 12 volts plus, and the other one will be coming back from whatever connected it in the RV. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about that. Our four wires, plus and minus. Uh, on the plus side, these furnace brains like to see greater than 10 and a half volts. So if you have a battery that's getting low and it's less than 10 and a half volts, it's possible that this may not work because the brain inside is basically saying, hey, I don't have enough voltage to support the fan, therefore I'm gonna turn myself off. Okay, so there's your four wires. There's that part. So what I'm going to do now is I, I'm going to pan you back out a little bit. I just wanted to talk about the four wires and why does Darren always call it the blue circuit? Okay, it's because it's blue when it leaves the furnace and comes back from the furnace, but where the manufacturer connects it, it's going to change to other colors. Coleman's going to go to the thermostat, typically overwhelmingly, and Dometic um, is going to go up to the ceiling plenum on these wires. Coleman will probably only have one wire coming back and Dometic will have both. Got it? All right. Okay, so we've talked about the wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a battery. We're going to put it up on the bench. I'm going to put some propane up on the bench, and we're going to basically bench test this. Now, sometimes you could bench test these furnaces while they're in the RV and um, give it a known good 12 volts, give it a known good LP source. If you're going to be doing it, you don't need to pull the whole thing out. But it, because this manufacturer didn't put an access door, we had to pull the furnace out anyway. And um, so we're going to bench test it on the bench. So give me a second, I'll put a battery in a propane tank up there. We'll connect it and see what we got. Okay, folks, so what I've done is uh, I've, I've certainly put my battery in my propane up here, but I was trying to figure out the best way to get some shots to show you guys as we start to dive deep into this thing. And I wanted to show you what it's doing, and then we'll just go a little bit deeper. So I've got a camera right here. I've got a camera up above, and then I've got this one that I'm talking to you here. So I'll be, bear with me. I've got wires all over the place to get these cameras fed, and I've got my computer over here where I'm driving the show. So I don't mind if you see some of behind the scenes because we're really focused on getting this done. So what I want to do is I'm going to move us over to this camera, and then we'll, um, we'll connect everything, and we'll run the furnace, and we'll see what it's doing. Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, so that was fun. And now I've got you on that camera. Let's rotate this. And um, what I'm after is this port right here and these wires. So I'll tell you what, let me move you guys back a little bit. Okay, so we just moved everybody back. And so I've got this cylinder here. Um, let me reach for it. Okay. And now here's a little takeaway if you're watching my video. So if you're an RV tech, and I recommend getting yourself a little test, test hose, okay, a little test jig. So I've got a small little propane cylinder over there. And um, now here'd be a test question. You see the word vent, okay? For our purposes of testing, would it matter if I was doing it this way or, or sideways? The manual says it needs to be at a 45 degree downward angle. Um, but for our testing purposes, it doesn't matter if the thing's pointing up or not. The purpose for this is any water that gets inside, it needs to be able to drain out and not freeze this body with frozen water. So for our testing purposes, it really doesn't matter what position that's in, as long as we have it in there. And this is my test jig. I test it frequently because I need to know that this is a known good, um, that's a known good cylinder with known good fuel in it. And this is a known good um, regulator that's set to 11 inches of water column. Okay. But specifically, we really should test that to each appliance that we're working on. But for our purposes, we're just going to go with it because it's working. Okay. So that looks like three-eighths. Um, hold on. Let's see what we got here. Let's try a three... I said three-eighths. Let's try a three-quarter, and let's go with 11 sixteenths. Let's see here. Let's see if we win the lottery today. Yes. And yes, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. Okay, so we had a, a live stream recently, and uh, somebody was asking that you know they were trying to turn this and they were having a hard time and it was stuck and so you always use a backup wrench on these um, uh, brass fittings but what i wanted to show the trick i would said put them kind of at an angle can you guys see that kind of yeah you get the idea where you just kind of squeeze them okay so in this instance i need to put them in that kind of an angle so you see how i've got them got them kind of crisscrossed where i could just kind of squeeze down on this okay like that like a pair of pliers so that would be a good a good trick if you're needing more grip or something is if you have the room you don't always get this much room i'm out here in the open air but uh, you may or may not have this much room to do this thing but sometimes if you need more leverage you just you can position these things a bunch of different ways to give yourself more of a of a grip right there okay so we're tight 
<coughs> Technically, I would normally do a gas sniff test or bubble leak test, but for our purposes, we're in the open air, I'm gonna go with it. Um, on the back of the furnace, let me mention this while we're at it, okay? You'll find your furnace like this, there'll be two screws. You take the two screws off, this cover comes off after you take your ductwork. On the ductwork, notice how these have a slot in them, okay? The duct, you'll rotate it and you'll find this little key and the thing will snap right out. That is to say, you don't need to take the hose clamps off to get the duct out. A lot of times these little adapters, your hose will connect to the adapter. The adapter will, will find this little key on the Suburban that's at the bottom, okay? And on the side, it's pointing to the rear, okay? So that might help you. On, let me let me peek over here. I think it's pointing. Yeah, on this side they're pointing to the rear. On this side they're pointing to the rear, and in the back they're pointing to the bottom. So just remember, rear and down for where your keys are going to be. Unless somebody put it in upside down, but you'll also notice there's this little half a moon thing here, which kind of goes in way of that screw right there. So we're done with this. I'm gonna move them out of the way. Okay, so we've got our LP connected and we've got our gas on. Let me scooch this back a little bit right about there and now we're going to connect our wires so let's transition to a different camera angle and we'll we'll show you how we're going to connect all these wires together okay so we just connect our lp system here and so what we're going to be working on is these wires so let me move this over a little bit okay and um so to connect to these wires there's a couple of different ways what we need to do the goal is to put 12 volts on these two and the goal is to connect these two so we have power to the furnace and we are going to play thermostat, okay? So let's start off by getting 12 volts to this furnace, okay? So to do that, I'm going to use my test lead kit, okay? And um, now this test lead kit, I'm gonna be using it a lot here for this, I am anticipating. So let me just show you what I'm working on. This is a tool that I make myself. So let me just go right over here. All right, so this is our website, myrvworks.com, okay? And you see Happy Camper Say My RV Works. And so if you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see the Submit Service Request tab. If you're an RV tech, you might want to have a look at that. Just don't submit it unless you want Trisha to call you <laughs> and uh, try to schedule an appointment. But uh, here we have our online tools and parts store. So I want you to click that button. And then here we have, these are the tools that I developed. Darren, yours truly makes these tools. If you want to buy some of our merch, the hat that I have on my head or some t-shirts or mugs, this is where you would go for that. And we have an Amazon affiliate store and that's where that's located. But for this test lead set, we're going to go here to view our tools. Once that loads, you'll see these are the tools that, that yours truly makes. So I make all these test leads. We buy these in bulk here and uh, I do make some tap uh, LP fittings. If you're going to be working on LP, you might want to have a look at some of these LP taps that I create. And then if you're working on Aqua Hot, this um, switch makes it really nice to do that. And we do have some white space here. And guess what? I am constantly working on new tools. I've got some very exciting ones that I'm working on, a little bit too mature to tell you what they are um, because we're still in beta testing on those. But uh, by the time they get to this site, I, they're mature tools that, that I use myself. So the ones we're going to be using is this test lead right here. Um, that's the one that I just showed you. So this is what I make. It's stacking banana plugs. And um, then you kind of, that's what it is. It's four feet long. And then if you cruise down here, I, I give you a lot more information about it. It's um, more information you'd ever want to know about a test lead set. Um, those of you know, I used to be an engineer, so it's, I had fun writing that, right? <laughs> Running this through the test. Um, and uh, but it's rated for 20 amps. And um, so there you go. We soldered all those together. These are Pomona um, piercing insulation plugs, not to be confused with the cheap knockoffs you can get, you know, from overseas and, you know, Asia and everything. These are industrial rated uh, piercing probes that should last you a long, long time. Some people ask questions about these. This little piercing probe right there will not harm the insulation at all. And a lot of times your insulation will reheal itself. And so when you, this little cradle, you, you'll see me do this. I'll just take a second. You'll, you'll grab the wire that you're working with and you'll push this little black slider this black slider slides up and down you'll you'll slide that in to kind of lock the wire in place then you'll twist your knob and it pierces into the insulation you don't have to squeeze it all the way you just need to make sure you have good positive contact and then the back of this is where your banana plug jack plugs into it so i'll be doing that quite frequently here on this um, these are standard um, dmm probes that you might find on your multimeter things like that 
um, piercing probes, these are fine points. Sometimes you're working on refrigerators, you're working on these furnace connectors, and you really need to get into those small points, so I use those quite a bit. Um, alligator clips. I went through quite a few alligator clips until I finally settled on these. Uh, these are the perfect size for what we do. Um, here's the bag um, all opened up. Okay, so enough on the, the that part of it, okay? So um, anyway, I just wanted to show you, you're going to be seeing me using this test probe a lot. And I just want to say you can get one yourself as well. All right, so let's go back to uh, our store. Also, if you see me working on some other tools, uh, since I'm here on this site, you can go to our Amazon store. So this is basically amazon.com slash shop slash Inc. And uh, so we have our own Amazon store here. And uh, so we're working on a furnace. So I've got a furnace page. And here I have the dinosaur boards. I've got some thermostats that we'll talk about, different motors, different blower wheels, um, sail switches, electrodes. Um, here's some solenoids, and we might need to get those for this furnace here, and um, different um, burner assemblies as well. And um, so if you have, um, you might also see me use some other tools. Let's see where they are. Oh, there they are right there. Every time we make, every time I add something to this store, it changes. I had this looking so beautiful and perfect, and then you add something to it, and it changes all your thumbnails. So here we have some test equipment, like the meter that I'll be using is this one right here. Um, you might also see me using a gas sniffer here in a few minutes. I like this Klein one a lot. Before I used the Klein, I was using this Amprobe. Um, it works fine. It's just that I work in the rain a lot, and uh, the, this tip here was getting wet and um, it just rendered the whole thing useless. So that was an expensive, don't work in the rain story. So this client so far has been doing well. This is the probe I use for air conditioners. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll do a whole other website on these tools. Some folks just recently on our live stream asked just about manometers. Here's a slack tube I use and here's the digital one. Okay, so let's get back to work. So, but all that's from our Myerby Works site and um, view our tools. And hey, while we're here, you can go ahead and get yourself a t-shirt or a hat and show some love our way. We got all kinds of fun stuff. And then Trisha's adding, there's more white space. She's always adding more things there as well. Um, I'm into CNC machining and routing, so don't be surprised if you see some fun little things as I get time. So let's get back to work. Okay, so we're back here. So I just wanted to take a second and show you this test lead. There have been some questions like, where did you get it from? Well, I made it, and now I'm making it available for you. So I've got the battery over there. So what I want to do is take uh let's build this thing so this is like barbie's playhouse right <laughs> you're just going to accessorize so i'm going to get these big banana clips on there and i'm going to grab let's see this is the plus side and this is the minus side so now i have access to power here on the end of this so i need to get 12 volts to here and when i get 12 volts to there one of these is going to go hot okay so it's going to be this one with the white wire. We talked about that already. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a connector on the end of it to just kind of keep it honest from touching anybody that it's not supposed to. And so let's see here. We're going to grab these probes here. I'm just going to connect them right on. And then I'm going to grab these alligator clips. Okay. And now I have 12 volts at my tip. You could have also used a power probe for this. Um, so I've got 12 volts plus, I've got 12 volts minus. Okay, so now my furnace is hot. And our propane is also hot. So if I start this, um, we should have heat, right? So to start it, I'm gonna become the thermostat. So here is my blue circuit. I'm just gonna connect it together. And let's see what we got. So now our furnace started. And I'm expecting, I've got gas on, okay? I'm expected to hear a click, and I'm expected to hear the ticking, and I'm expecting to get ignition. Okay, I've got no ignition. So it's doing the same thing to me here. We, the ignition should have happened within about 18 seconds. I do hear an audible little clicky sound, which is our electrode. So this is what it was doing to us in the field, and um, the other thing is I'm not smelling gas but I do hear the ticky tick sound. So at this point, let's go ahead and take this furnace apart and start drilling a little bit deeper, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and take away the call for heat, okay? So now the furnace will probably run for about, so I've taken these wires apart, the furnace will probably run for about, um, what would that do, wrong one, let's go to this one. 
Nope, it's always going to want to go to that one. I was going to try to zoom in on that. The furnace is going to run for about 90 seconds once the call for heat is gone because it's trying to purge itself. Okay, it did not ignite, so I can safely just kind of take it away. Um, so let me move that over and let's talk a little bit. Let me turn off my gas and um, I will take apart the gas valve here. And um, let's see here. That was the... So I'll show you this little trick again. So I am going to... This was 11 sixteenths is what it turned out to be. And um, I want to kind of create a pair of pliers right here if you see that they're just at an odd angle and i'm just going to squeeze so we had a, a an, an rv tech watching and they were asking she was a lady and um, she was asking if she knew of any tools that help with the reach and uh, that's the trick is to set those pliers up like that so let me set this up like that now to get this furnace apart what i want you to look at up at the top camera there's a sometimes a screw right in there this one doesn't have it you see the hole down below. And so then we look in the back. Here, I'll go for this camera. <laughs> okay, we go to the back and you'll see a screw right there. So we're going to take that one screw out right there and the whole inside will slide apart. So let's get ourselves, that is a Phillips P2. So we're just going to take this one screw out. And make a tray right here. Okay. With that loose, now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the gas valve port right here and it's got this little slot in it right there. That's how you know which way this thing is gonna come out. So it's gonna be coming out this way. So the screw I took out in the back and or the screw in the front is the only thing holding this together, okay? So that is to say, if you had access to this from the outside, you could take the screw out and the whole thing will slide apart, okay? All right, so now we've taken that one screw out. Let me get this out of the way. Move, it ah, move this over here. So now we have the guts. While it's out, one of the things I like to do is look at the heat exchanger. I'm looking right in this area here is where we see most of the cracks developed. So I'm always looking right in here for any cracks. That's a very popular place for these things to crack. And so, I'm not here to look at this, but hey, it's always good to just kind of look at your heat exchanger every time you take it out. By the time you get to the bottom, it's not as hot, but I'm still looking for cracks. I see no cracks. I'm also doing a visual every time I do this, looking at my wires to see if my wires are scuffed or pinched because they do go over the sharp edge. So that's just a little bit of a, you know, I always do that. It's a habit and you just saw me do it just now. Okay, so now it would be fun to reconnect this again and what I, I did not have ignition, but I also did not hear a click sound. Now down inside that, or here, that red thing down in there, or I said red, that green thing, that's our gas valve, okay? And I did not hear that click. All right, so what I'm gonna do is let's move one camera up right in this area here. I'll take this guy. I'm gonna move him right in there. Bear with me, there we go, okay because we're gonna camp out right there. I'm gonna show you how to diagnose these things. Let me move the light a little bit closer. Okay, so we're gonna camp out right in this board and uh, you got the view up above as well, but um, we're gonna camp out on this board and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you where the signal should go and what we expect to see. Actually, let me move you back just a little bit. I need a little bit of room to work. Okay, so you can still see in there, good. So I'm gonna reconnect my furnace. At this point, I am not gonna connect gas because I just need to um, there's my plus. I'm going to get yellow to be my minus right here. Okay, let's get the whiskers out of the way. Okay, and then let's do some housekeeping on these wires. Okay, now I've got plus and minus. Let me just show you something while we're at this point. Add value to you. Where's my test leads? Okay, all right. Now, we talked about the blue circuit already. I'm going to just mention one more thing. I'm going to put my meter on DC. Um, and so I need a ground reference. So it looks like there's a good one if I can get this thing to, to grab. Okay. Uh, there is that. See, see what I just did? I had to untangle all these wires. When I made my test lead set, you'll notice that it's parallel and it's held you don't have to mess with all these wires. It's ridiculous. So, um, okay. So I've got a good ground reference 
And um, let me just test my meter for a known good source. Okay, I've got 12.6, 12.7 volts. Okay, so these blue wires, one of them is going to be hot. Okay, so in this instance, is it this one? No, is it this one? Yes, okay, so the blue wire with the white stripe is hot and we can follow that around and we can see that it's basically piggybacking off down in here. Um, so the red wire is, so the red wire is gonna come straight up here to the furnace and then he's gonna piggyback off of the blue and then leave and go into what you hear me call going into the village and waiting to be connected again, okay? So that's what's going on with that. I just wanted to show you that real quick. So with these wires, these blue wires, one of them will be 12 volts hot. And it's the other one that when the other one comes back 12 volts hot, that is your call for heat signal, okay? So we want to prove to see, um, I need a good ground. Here is a good ground reference. That seems I'm just gonna wedge them in there. And um, what I wanted to look at, we know the furnace is starting, but we wanna check to see if our sales switch is coming back. So let me get my, I want to get a test probe. So this is where these little small ones come in really handy. And what I'm going to do is it's the red wire coming back that I need to monitor to see is that uh, that's my cell switch wire. And I really want to get in there and see is my cell, cell switch being made. OK, so we're going to. So here, here's what I'm looking at. The, the fan is going to start. I need to know is my cell switch going to give me 12 volts into this board right here. OK, so I am going to be the thermostat again. All right, here we go. We expect to start. And here, we've got 12 volts right away. Okay, so that tells me, there's a glare, sorry. There it is. So that tells me my cell switch signal is good. Okay, and um, now the next question, let's go to the brown wire. The brown wire is going to be our gas valve. And here, I've got 12, vol 12 volts going to my gas valve. And it goes to zero. It's going to try three times. Uh, I want to see it come back again. There it goes. I did hear a very subtle click inside, and I do hear a ticky-tick sound, but we're getting voltage on the brown wire. The brown wire is the one that goes to my gas valve. So at this point, I'm suspecting we have a gas valve problem, okay? The reason it's not starting... Now, let me ask you guys a question. Here is a question on the table. Let me turn this off. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna disconnect the one that's not the, got the white stripe on it because that one's 12 volts hot and this guy's not. So let me move this out of the way. Um, all right, at this point we have proven a couple things. But let me ask you a question. If the furnace is not starting right now, well, let me, let me back up my question. And wouldn't it be fun, and I'm gonna be working on this for you guys, just give me some time to develop it and I don't think I could do it on YouTube or Rumble, but I am working on a thing where it's like a choose your own adventure, where I will diagnose one of these things and then I will give you a couple options on which way you wanna go with the troubleshooting. And then I will have video links that link to each choice that you choose and then we'll follow the path that way. So that's an idea I'm working on. So give me some time to get that set up. But let me just ask you a question. The furnace is running, the fan is blowing. We do not have ignition. Now, a lot of people at this point, I say a lot simply because this is what I hear on the forums and, and talking to people. Oh, it's a sales switch. It's a sales switch. In this instance, we just proved that the sales switch is good. The sales switch is coming back on this red wire right here. And we know that, let me spin this around, because their sales switch, let me turn you a little bit more, sales switch is right in here. Now, look at that. I do see some crap coming out of there. So maybe there is... There, maybe there is something with their cell switch. And you know what? As much stuff is in there, there may be something with her cell switch. So it might behoove us to take that out. And to do that, it's just these four screws. One, two, three, four. The thing comes off, we, we get it. I could also hit it with some air. But while we've come so far, it might be good to take this cover off. But we'll do that later. The point is, I hear a click. So, so back to my original question, could it be the cell switch? I would say at this point, no. The reason it cannot be the cell switch at this point is because we have power coming out of our DSI board, direct spark ignition board on the brown wire. The brown wire is the one, if we flip this up, 
Can everybody see the brown wire? If you follow the brown wire, the brown wire is the one that feeds our gas valve right there. Okay. So if we have 12 volts coming in on this brown wire and the white wire on the gas valve is grounded, then this should work, right? So what I want to do at this point is let's turn this over. Maybe we'll go up to the camera above us. I want to turn this this way. At this point, I am suspecting there's something with this gas valve. I'm suspecting it's either going to be the solenoids or I'm suspecting it's a gas valve itself, okay? So this is where I might get some compressed air and I do have a compressor I need to turn on. I might just get a can of office air and go squirt it in here. I might squirt some of that little, you know, d duster air that you get to clean off keyboards through here. And if I energize this, I should have some airflow um, is what I would expect. Now to really do that, we really need to take it apart from the other side. But what I want to do is I want to prove that I have a click there. So I'm going to take these little guys here okay and brown being plus i'll just grab this right here okay so now i'm tapped into my brown wire and i'm going to go with the um ground wire and i want to get it on the side there it is i want to get it on this on the on the gas valve side i don't want to pick it up anywhere else i want to make sure because maybe our problem is a gas valve so I'm pierced into both. I'm happy with that. And so one of my test leads is being used for battery power. And so, hey, here's an idea. Buy two. So here's a second one that I use. Okay. Um, I know the guy that makes these. He gives me good deals. Um, so here's a second test lead that we'll use. And um, we're just going to give it plus and minus. And... Let's see, there's that. And then let me go back over here. Another tool I make taps directly into a battery. So like your little, if you use 12 volt tools like I do, um, let's see, here's a 12 volt tool right here. So here's a battery pack that I use on my drill. This drill right here, 12 volt battery, bigger battery. And um, so what I expect to hear is a click. I wanna hear a clicking sound, okay? Let me listen. You hear that? Let me put that right down here. Here we go. Okay, so we know that if we give this... Hold on, let me put this back on there. We know that if we give this 12 volts, that at least we're getting a click. And I can even feel it. Oh, look! listen to that. Now we have a better click. Okay, so we know that we're getting power to our solenoids. And that's a good thing. So at this point... I can take these back off. So that was a, I'm testing the solenoids. Now, have I tested the solenoids? Not 100% um, because it takes two solenoids for this thing to work. So what I want to do now, if you see in there, can you see inside of there? Let me move this camera and give you guys a better angle. Hold on. Okay, so what we're after here is a solenoid in here. So I basically put 12 volts on the brown wire and the white wire. And... Um, but I want to check the ohms value on these solenoids as well. So I will take my meter. I'm going to put my meter in the Omega Horseshoe deal. And um, I'm going to check one side at a time. So I'm going to actually disconnect that lead and this one. Okay. So I've got those totally off. And I will take my meter in ohms. I'm thinking it should come in around 3940, I think. Um, let's see what we get. So the meter's there. I'll tell you what it what I get. And I'm just going to touch these. I have 30, 38.6, 38 point, 39, 39 ohms. Okay, 39 ohms of resistance. All right, let's check the other side. Now, when you put your um, gas valves back together, they want the grounds to be inboard. Okay, let's take the other side off. Okay, that's out of there. And let's see what our resistance is on this side. See, this is what I didn't have time to do in the field. I've got 40 ohms of resistance right there, 40. So at this point, I'm thinking these, these solenoids are probably pretty good. Okay, and... Um, so this is where I'm going to get my can of office air and squirt through. 
Um, now, if if one of these solenoids was out of spec, where did Darren get the 40 ohms? Just because I've done this so many times, these are some numbers you just remember um, in the neighborhood of 40. 38, 39, 40, it's always plus or minus, like heating elements for water heaters is 10. Um, refrigerator heating elements varies, but um, so, so at this point, I'm thinking my, my solenoids are okay. I'm wondering if there's a problem with my gas valve. Okay, so let me flip this over because I wanna do my blowing through air through the thing test. And again, what we're doing is we're following the trail because we had the blower start. We had proof of ignition. We had we had proof of a sail switch. We had um, proof that the DSI board was sending voltage out to this. We've then tested this and we've checked our ohms to the gas solenoids. And there and everything at this point is in spec, but we're still not getting ignition. Therefore, I'm beginning to suspect it's the valve itself. But we have to prove this. Okay. So we can run LP through it, but I'm just going to get a can of office air and blow it through it. But in order to get to there, I need to take the thing off the other side, which is a lovely um, process. So I'm going to take those wires off. All right. Now, where is everybody at? Can everybody see? Um, so in order to check my airflow through the gas valve, I'm going to need to take this gas burner off. Okay, so what that's going to look like is taking all these screws out, and then there's a nut down inside that's about a 5 8 down there, which is very lovely, and, and I hate it. Um, you can't let's see if you can see that nut down there. Yeah, see, there you go. It's that nut down there, that's a 5 8 and I just hate getting it. So let me get a 5 8 and we'll take that nut off, and then we'll take all these screws off. We'll take the burner out, and we'll look at the burner, but we'll also... Um, check our gas valve. Um, so let's do that. Now, you might be asking, well, Darren, why are you going to go through all this trouble? Now, the, the thing is, when I was at their RV and when I've had it on my bench, at no point have I smelled LP coming through this system. Okay? So it could have been that the electrode is bad. It could have been that the electrode gap is not set right, but I've never had ignition. But if it had anything to do with the electrode, then at that point, I would have smelled gas. I would have smelled the ethyl mercaptan in the LP. And at no point have I smelled ethyl mercaptan in the LP. Therefore, and we are sending 12 volts to that gas solenoid, which is that green thing right there. So we're sending 12 volts to it from the DSI board. We've proved it. And then I bench tested it myself. And I'm still, and I've tested my solenoids. So at this point, it's looking more and more like the trail is pointing to the gas valve itself, okay? Now, if I would have smelled gas, then it couldn't be this. It would be something else. But because we're, we're smelling, because we're not smelling gas, it's more than likely going to be something with the gas valve, either the solenoids or the gas valve itself. So at this point, I want to blow some air through it. Just to, I'm going to energize the solenoids and blow air through the gas valve. So here's, okay, it's a 5 8 crow's foot thing that I put down here. This is what I came up with. If you've got any better suggestions, I'm all ears because I hate working on these things because of this. It's like such a tight quarters to get a tool in there. And then I've lost 20 minutes trying to get them back together again, just getting the threads lined up. Suburban, if you're watching, please come up with some other way. Bring this nut up here, please. Why it has to be so far down there is just madness. Um... As you see, I, you can't get your hands down in there. You can't work on these things. It's a real pain. Um, this is where smaller hands would come in handy. But all I can do is do one flat at a time. And if you're working flat rate, <laughs> get it, flat rate? If you're a flat rate tech and you only can turn this thing one flat at a time, it's really killing you. Oop. Good, I've got it off. All right, so now that we've got that loose, I don't necessarily need to take all this off, I just needed to get that loose. So let's flip this over. Okay, and there's a couple more screws we could play with. Um, if we were to look, can you guys see this? Down in here, there's gonna be a screw that's gonna hold this in place. So I'm just gonna loosen that screw, actually remove that screw, and that's what's holding 
preventing it from twisting. And uh, now I should be able to twist this sometimes. Yeah, there we go. And I uh, was holding it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these lines off. Oh, that was, the little cover was brittle and it, it broke. So I've got four grounds. I'm just gonna take the four grounds off to see if I can, yeah, okay, so I can raise this. So here you see, I've raised this up out of the way and um, we could actually, since if I was in the field, I would not do it. I'm about to do, but since I want to show you, I want to isolate this. So I'm going to cut these tie wraps off and I want to get this whole thing to be mine. I want to own this thing. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to take this off and uh, pull it out. So there we go. Okay, so let me move the, the burner out of the way, and now we're down to this. So let's do this. Move this guy out of the way. Okay, so I have taken out the entire burner assembly because I am a, I'm very suspicious that there's a restriction in this hose or there's something with our gas valve. So I've taken out this harness here. You've seen this. This is the part that goes to the DSI board. And so I've taken it out, and the reason I've done that is because I want the daisy chain of brown. Okay, and so I then will take my uh, test lead kit. I'm going to do the same thing I did before, and I'm going to tap into brown, and I could just get a grabber there, but I'm going to tap into um, the, uh, the minus, and since my battery is sitting right here, I will just use that, and I'm going to just connect directly now this time I did not hear a click. Oh, fascinating. I'm not hearing a click this time, guys. Uh, oh, it's because my battery came disconnected. All right, bear with me. Hold up. Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, now we're connected. You know, I'm still not hearing a click here. Okay, so at this point more suspicion. I'm going to get my meter here. And let's get the meter. Throw on 12 volts DC. I want to verify I'm getting power into the... Yeah, I'm getting 12 volts right at this point. Um, but I'm not hearing a click. So now I'm back to... So what I'm doing, guys, I'm just, I'm looking for my 12 volts. I want to see where it went. Um, and so there's a negative. So I need to get my, my pointing probe. I did not hear a click this time at all. And, and, and it's simply right here. So I want to take my piercing probe and I'm going to go right in on that guy right there and see what I got there. I'm not getting 12 volts. So am I not pierced correctly oh look it just clicked it just it just clicked i wonder if you have a bad wire this wire is kind of darkened okay so i wonder if we have a bad wire connection let's see plus and minus again i got 12 volts now i do okay so let me now put it like that and i got a can of this air stuff let me take a glove off so if this is working, ah, this is where two people come in handy. Where's Dakota when you need him? So I'm going to feel, I am not feeling any air coming through there at all. Nothing. No air at all. Okay. So, and it's clicking again. It keeps clicking. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a new set of wire jumpers. I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to make a new set of wire jumpers because this has some issues to it. I'm trying to get it to click again on me. Yeah, there's some weirdness that's going on here. So yeah, let me. I'm gonna go off camera. I'm gonna make a new jumper here, and um, see if that doesn't fix. I'm gonna start with with the white. Let me show you what I'm seeing with this white one. So let me disconnect this and this. Move him out of the way. This white one looks like he got hot, and uh, I'll hold it up to the camera and show you what I'm looking at. Uh, there it is. Can you guys see how it's dark right there? Okay. 
So I'm wondering if the wire got brittle. It is stiff to move. So I'm gonna make a new one of these. Brown is still kind of pliable, but I might make a new brown one. The challenge with brown is I'm gonna have to use a splice because he's part of this harness here. And um, so let me go off camera. I'm going to make a new jumper because at this point, I'm kind of suspicious of the wiring itself, okay? So before we go any farther, it's worth it to make the jumper. Um, while I've got it out, let me do one more test on these solenoids. Uh, so here I've got 37. That seems kind of high. Uh, and here I've got 30, 38. No, 37. I said around 40, so we're good. I'll tell you what. Let me bear with me for a second. Let me get a known good solenoid. I've got them in my inventory. Let me get one. I'm going to compare a brand new solenoid to what we get right here. Okay, I'm back. So I've got two brand new solenoids. And remember that Amazon link I showed you guys a minute ago? That's where you get them from. So let's just see. Here, let me do it this way. I want to grab everybody and get me, the human, out of it. So I'm just going to grab. This is a known good solenoid. And I got 30, I got 38.6 on a brand new known good solenoid. Okay. So I got 38.6. Another brand new known good solenoid, 38.5. So a brand new solenoid is that. These guys are coming in at... Oh, now he's saying he's open. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. The thing with these is they turn tightly. Okay, do we have a bad... See, this is live, unscripted. You're seeing it happen. That is open loop. Okay, as of right now, we have a bad solenoid. It's interesting that a minute ago, I wonder if that's part of our intermittency, because a minute ago, that solenoid was reading 38, 39. Let's go to this side. Here, that guy's 38. I got 38 on my meter on the solenoid on that side. But if I go to this solenoid, let's check them again. Yeah. Oh, now he's working. It's intermittent, though, guys. Hold on. I wonder... We know that air, gas, whatever, is not making it through here. So, that's fascinating. I got 36 without my alligator clips. I got 37 without the alligator clips. But when I put the alligator clips on, it's open so they screw on to these guys i mean i'll easily put the new solenoids on there but i really want to know what's going on here this is fascinating to me open loop oh l okay come over to this one thirty seven so i know my alligator clips are good okay so it's it, okay I'm going to call it. I'm going to replace both of these solenoids. I got two brand new ones here. So let's just do that. Could that be the whole problem? Uh, let's see. Could that be the whole problem? Now, also don't want crap to get inside of my gas valve. That would be bad. Okay. There's another way to test these things also. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on. Um... You know, these little notches that they fit into. All right. Now, normally, you, what I'm doing, you could do directly on the furnace itself. You don't need to take it off like I did. The only reason I took this thing out and did all this unwiring and everything was to kind of get this on the bench to add value to the video. Normally, when you're replacing solenoids, you could do it directly on the furnace itself. Okay. So, there's that. Now, okay, so that's interesting. Let me now repeat the exact same test that I just did and let's see what we get now 388 okay let's go to this side scientific method type stuff 386 okay good now here's another little fun test we can do um, where is my battery lead right here all right wait for it this is worth the price of admission I can get all my parts. 
we're going to test these solenoids. And um, I will, here, let me grab these. So I'm going to go with a red on that one and a black on this one. Let me clean up my table here. So I need a black and a red. And then let me get a little screwdriver. Uh, this one should work. Okay. So I've just got a screwdriver stuck in on this thing. Polarity does not matter. I should create a magnetic field. And it should pull my screwdriver in. And it is not. Nothing. Nothing. No pulling of my screwdriver. Nothing at all. Okay, so let's try this guy. I might need a here. Let me let me use this instead. The screwdriver might be a little bit too too big. Let's try this. If this no, okay, you saw that? Watch. I'm just gonna tap it. See how it pulled it in? Okay. There, that's a good solenoid. That's what they're supposed to do. See how it created that little field? Okay. So let's test that with this one. That screwdriver just a little bit too big. Okay, same test. No, nothing. See that? It's not pulling it in. So we've got a bad solenoid. We just tested it and um, nothing. It's, it's not doing anything. Okay, um, even if we were to turn it over, nothing. Okay, nothing at all. All right, so let's do that one more time from both sides. So I'm testing the solenoid. This is just a real simple bench test. There he goes. So I'm just tapping it, and it pulls it in. This one should also pull it in. See that? Kind of a little fun science project. Okay, so we've definitely got a bad solenoid right here. I will put a mark on it. So why it was testing good, I don't know. So I'm going to put an X right there. Okay, so that guy's a bad solenoid. Bad, bad. Okay, so with that, now remember I was going to, so again, test lead, I love the thing. Look at all the things you could do in the field with it. I feel like a, a sales guy. Hey, I just know that I make it for my own use and I love it and I'm making them for you guys. So now that I replace a solenoid, let me then um, do this test again before I make my wire harness. I might still do that anyway, but let's do this. Okay. There. Okay, so I've got the grounds in the center and the 12 volts on the outside. That's the way they say they want it. And then I'm going to grab this one far away. I want to see if I can traverse through this darkened area here. Where's my other right here? Likewise, I'm going to grab far away. I want to make sure it can traverse all the way to the other side. All right. So then I uh, need my battery lead. So this is another one that I make, the battery test kit, the battery tap. And uh, let's just get a battery here. I'm hearing a much more louder audible click. Take off a glove. Let's repeat our test. I took off the wrong glove, didn't I? Let's do this one. Okay, let's put this right here. Oh yeah, I'm feeling air big time. Okay, I feel the air coming out the other side. Okay, so at that case, the whole thing was bad solenoids. You saw the whole process we went through to check that. So I don't need to make new wire harnesses. I may, but I don't need to. Um, and this whole intermittency thing might have been something in the coils. So now that we know we have good solenoids and, and all this, uh, let's reassemble and then do a test fire. Uh, because I'm getting air through it, I'm pretty much sure I'm gonna get the LP through it as well. Okay, so now we have everything reconnected. We've got 12 volts going to our battery. I will become the thermostat. And now before I connect the gas, I wanna hear a click. Before it was a click, but, um, and I'm not only gonna hear a click, but I'm looking in this window right here. And, um, okay, good. So that's good. I'm the thermostat and about 18 seconds. I should hear a click and I'm going to look inside this window here and I'm going to see if there's a, a, a spark. There's my click and I see my spark. Nice, good, strong spark. Okay, so I got a spark through the window and I heard a click. So at this point, I'm thinking we are good for connecting to LP. 
and uh, so let's connect to LP and see if we can't get the furnace to fire off. Alright, so we're going to take this guy, let's see here. So, so I've got these two at an angle. There we go. Okay. And I've got this off. Let's turn on the LP. All right. Move that there. Heat might be pouring out of that thing soon. This is for this is for everything. Let's see. Let's go to this one. So I've just been called, given it a call for heat again. So let's hope that we get ignition at this point. Hmm. I heard a click. I see a spark. There we go. There it goes. There it goes. There may have been air in the line. So now we've got heat. So the whole problem was these solenoids here, or one of them. Yeah, that feels good. Woohoo! Okay. Now, um, so you don't need to see me put it back in the car because I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes. I just want to make sure we're happy and healthy and everybody's good, uh, surviving and thriving. Let me peek in my window to see what my flame looks like. Now this this thing here is gonna get really really hot. This heat exchanger. Um, oh yeah, we got a beautiful view in there. Uh, let me grab my my other camera. Okay, so here we have the other camera, and you can see there's a a, a nice flame in there. Let's see if we see our electrode. We may not be able to. See. Pretty sure that glowing orange thing is the electrode there. Um, yeah, that's definitely the electrode. And let's see if we can find the other. There's the other end of it. Okay. So we like to see the glowing electrode. If that was not glowing, then um, there may be a problem with the electrode in the igniter. Okay, this thing's getting really hot, so I'm going to turn it off. Okay, we turn the flame off. Um... All right, so we're letting it cool down now. Well, hey, folks, and it just turned off. How about that? Um, I think I'm going to finish this up. I, I think I've covered everything. I think we, we, we got this thing. Um, so we talked about the four wires. We, we kind of followed the trail. The reason we, we suspected gas valve was because we were not smelling that ethylmer captain coming from our propane. And that tells us everything has to do with the solenoids or the gas valve. In this instance, we followed it down. I showed you some techniques on troubleshooting, even showed you a little, my pick being pulled into the solenoid to see that it works. Um, but uh, so yeah, I'll put it back together. I'll bring it back to the customer tomorrow. And uh, they would have been out with, without a furnace for I think maybe two days. I think this was, I, gr I brought this yesterday and we'll get it to them tomorrow. So they'll be without a furnace for two days. But at the end of the day, they were gonna buy a $1,500 furnace and it turned out to be like a $7 solenoid. And so you guys know how to check these and, and if that's the symptom. So, hey, join us on Patreon where our Patreon tiers are really trying to build that Patreon uh, experience for everybody, trying to really build a great community. The $15 and $25 tier people are getting access to our um, how to start, maintain, and operate a mobile RV service business. And our tech tier, our $25 tier, we get a live Zoom meeting with me and Trisha. Uh, Trisha is our office manager. Uh, we get a live meeting uh, once a month where we all get together and uh, we have fun uh, learning about each other and just building this community of RV techs. So um, happy camper say my RV works. And now that we got their furnace working, I think they'll be very pleased with a very small service bill versus a $1,500 new furnace. So from Joyce Washington, until the next video, thank you for watching and we appreciate you guys. Bye.